Welcome to the Dream Speak Podcast, a place where we talk about everything and anything under the stars. I am your host, Dora Grace. Arlene Yvette is a self-taught surrealist and expressionist artist with musical synesthesia. She's inspired by music, written works, and personal life experiences. She can often be found live painting at music festivals, live music venues, band rehearsal sessions, and or traveling to other countries to paint to international Indian musicians. My name is Arlene Yvette. I am a visual artist. Um, I have synesthesia, which means I see colors and images when I hear music um, or read any particular inspiring story, and uh, I paint them. Is that good? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you so much for being on. Uh, this is so fun because I don't know, every time that I talk to you, it just I feel like I get like a burst of energy. So um, yeah, it's really fun to connect with you. <laughs> I feel the same way. It's just one of those things like divine timing is everything. And I when I think about the fact that we barely spoke in Italy, <laughs> just I know. because we're in our own circles not because of anything weird um I just think it, like life is just so funny that way you know like I was always meant to be your friend but it just wasn't at that time yeah so yeah we we met just to let everyone know that we met in Italy this past August it was August yeah and yeah I think before that like we talked a little bit uh through like our group chat but yeah, yeah. but, but no, I didn't know you at all before the trip and um yeah I feel like the past couple of months of me coming back home it's like I don't know I feel like we just like connect yeah yeah because you were talking a lot about breath work and Reiki and it's uh, exactly um the same kind of uh experience I was working on and and searching through spiritually and so that's I just remember feeling like I needed to contact you and I feel like we've been talking pretty much every day ever since <laughs> yeah yeah no we have we have for sure and I, I know I said this to you before but I um yeah I'm so inspired by you as as well and uh, yeah I'm, I'm just really happy to know you as a person and a friend and just seeing like the amazing work that you're doing and yeah I don't know so like you also inspire me as oh. well <laughs> um, <laughs> I know we're getting like real cheesy <laughs> um but yeah no I I mean it um yeah and I wanted to dive a little bit in on um yeah just like your painting process because I I've heard of it and I know of it but it it's so intriguing to me because I you're I think you're the first person that I know who has this um yeah so can you tell us a little bit about your journey sure um so I I know there are a lot of artists that actually have synesthesia I've just not seen anyone that particularly shares my journey and I, I don't know I feel like everybody um has their own journey anyway um but mine is it's very much connected to my relationship with with God and um and I say that with hesitation because I grew up um with a very evangelical church which I still have very fond memories of but <clears throat> as life has gone um that's just it's shifted I feel like God is much bigger than the box that a lot of people try to put him into um and so I'm constantly in a relationship with um, with God and, and what I've, I've learned as a child. Um, but, I uh, I do listen to God and the Bible more than I do the Christian church as it stands right now. Um, so, uh, I, and a, a lot of that has to do with like, when I, I started painting, um, a lot of the people in my community were kind of, um, had a lot to say about the choices that I was making you know, like using anatomical hearts versus a heart that's just generally accepted, you know, that doesn't yeah. look like an anatomical or, um, or if I, you know, I use a lot of symbolism. So anything like um, 
if if there's an exposed chest that has like ribs in it, you know, um, which to me is symbolic of just being an open human being, being open to to life, you know, versus closed off. Um, even though it hurts, even though there's two relations, there's usually a lot of scars when we're open. Um, yeah. And the people that tend to be open also tend to to be able to to communicate those scars and 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 a lot of them are musicians and so um i really am inspired by by the openness that a lot of people have to just really speak out their truth and their journeys um but i've always been able to see colors and images um through music you know when i was growing up my family had a lot of parties i'm puerto rican and, and <laughs> Uh, that what I the reason <laughs> that is because that usually means there's a lot of house parties, which is oh, exactly, yeah. you know, there was always house parties. And if I wasn't at, at my parents' house, it was at a family member's house. Um, and I always knew I was going to end up sleeping somewhere, you mm -hmm. know, and house, whether like at a cousin's house or my house. But I thought it was normal that every time I closed my eyes, I saw colors and I saw literal images of like things happening based off of what I was listening to and I was I was growing up I'd be like you know <laughs> having those conversations with my friends you know like those images you see and they'd be like what I'd be like nothing 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 um so I learned pretty quickly that it wasn't an everybody thing um and I just I remember thinking that if I could only get a paintbrush right and so I had artists in my family, like I have one uncle that that paints beautifully and he actually used to do murals for my grandmother a lot. Um, but other than him, I really didn't know anybody in my family that knew how to paint with an easel. Mm -hmm. And um, I remember around eight through high school, um, I would ask for an easel every Christmas. And in my mind, it had to be the most expensive thing in the world because it, it wasn't coming through. And I think, I think it's because they are pretty expensive. Um, I, the one that I use now actually right behind me, I got that on Facebook, um, through their shopping, uh, store, their Facebook market. Um, and, but I got that in my thirties, I'm 43 right now. And I didn't officially have my own easel until I was 35. Wow. I didn't start painting until I was 26 wow um, sketched a lot like I would yeah. sketch and, I, and I've written a lot of poetry and um a lot of what what I was painting when I finally got a paintbrush um was things that I've been seeing and hearing um you know through music and and uh books just since I could remember right yeah. um and um I just kind of would take a break in between. I didn't always have a very strong support system encouraging me to paint. And a lot of it was also tied to just the community I was with, the family that I was with. Um, um, you know, our community does become our family. And uh, they didn't always, you know, it was almost like my, 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 uh, my art was too gruesome is what I would hear. Um, and it didn't honor God. And, and there were several times when I would paint over my canvases um, because I didn't want to be gruesome or misunderstood. And it was very painful and confusing for me because I thought, you know, God being the creator of all gives me this gift. Right. I'm born with these images and with this ability to see this. And sometimes they're pretty deeply connected to the person that is singing their music and and I won't even realize it you know so I have to be careful sometimes to make sure that I have permission to even show some of my paintings because sometimes it, it hits a little bit too close to home and I honor those um, I've very rarely had somebody tell me they'd rather I didn't show the painting um, mm -hmm. but I had to get to a point where I had to stop listening to the world around me and and just start listening to my heart and just really feel grounded and just how could I have this gift and not it not be something good um and once I embraced it it's it's really it's been quite the journey um 
I, I have, there's a difference in the kind of music that I will listen to. I'm very careful what about I listen to because um, not all imagery is great. I can see it, um, but, but with it sometimes comes pretty negative energy. And so if I sense that um, there's a, you know, music that's being put out there just for the sake of being dark and cause fear, mm-hmm. which will do, um, I don't, I don't pay that um, because it actually um, is a nev- negative experience for me as well, emotionally. Um, and so I'm just very careful as to who I choose. I go to a lot of places to listen to music. Um, I sketch while I listen to music. And I'd say about 40% of that actually gets painted. Mm-hmm. Um, depend on what gets inspired. Um and so that's that's basically what I do. <laughs> I hope that no. wasn't too long. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Um I think I think that's beautiful. And also what you were saying about how people would say that it's not or it's too gruesome or it's not of God, but yeah. it's in fact the opposite because I feel like art and music, it all connects to god because god is within us right Um, right or you know spirit or you know however you define it like it's within us so yeah i think they were telling you something that wasn't true (laughs) at all i think hearing their own fears a lot of people get really fearful about death itself and about the their own bodies um, whether it be what they feel or what they see. And um, and I I just had to decide not to let other people's fears or perspectives affect me because realistically speaking, God, me, like if you're saying I this is a God thing, right? Then my heart literally looks like an anatomic, like, like our bodies are a masterpiece, right? And there's worlds within worlds of them. If you look at cells, there's like all sorts of different things going on. And so- I just feel like that's kind of ridiculous to 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 hear somebody tell me now that that my anatomical hearts are gruesome in any way. I'm just like, no, that's beauty, and that's what's right. within our our literal bodies that was created, and the function itself is amazing. Why would I be ashamed to paint that? You know, like yeah. I, I can't with somebody else anymore, so I don't. Yeah, and I I think that's really brave to step outside of old old yeah, like old ways of thinking or old ways of especially coming from a quote unquote supportive family system. It's like sometimes you kinda have to go to the beat of your own drum and and yeah. your heart what's right for you. Yeah. Because, you know, a lot of times growing up, it's like we're taught to uh, listen to our elders or, you know, respect your parents and or, you know, whatever. But I really feel like, yes, you know, listening to other older people or family who have experience or are older. But I really feel like all of the answers that we seek are found within us. And I really feel like our intuition and I I just feel like it never leads us astray. So it's like sometimes we have to go against the grain and listen to what ourselves are telling us, you know, yeah. rather than listening to everyone else around us. Because I've had the same journey where it's like I've I've also been told I shouldn't do something or this or that but I don't know I just always had this uh fighting spirit which I feel like you're also the same way where I kind of went against all of that and followed what what I knew to be true in my heart yeah yeah and and I think that's really beautiful and all you can do right we get this one single life right yeah um I've had a lot of opportunities to really be with family members and friends that have that have been in moments where either life appeared to be leaving or did leave. And 
it's always goes back to the regrets, right? The things they didn't do. And, um, and anytime I've been given any kind of nugget of wisdom is just remember you have this one life, you know? And so I, I just want to make sure that I honor the gifts that I am given. I will say though, like my immediate, immediate family, like my mom and my dad and my sisters are, um, the reason I'm able to, uh, to just kind of be me, um, because they, they are super supportive. And if it was up to them, I, I wouldn't sell any of my paintings. They would just have it all over their houses. Right. <laughs> Um, but it's funny because like, when I think about it, it, if that's not the the core of human nature, right? Like we can have the closest people to our lives. I can have my best friend. I can have my mom, my dad, my sisters telling me that's amazing. Mm -hmm. Um, and it, it takes like one negative experience with, uh, with a, with a church member, or it'll take one negative experience with other families that you marry into. And then all of a sudden that becomes the truth, for some reason, the negative supersedes everything else that that's been positive. And, um, and that's a lesson that I've had to learn of just like, that's a choice too, right? Like I, I can choose the positive as much as I chose to listen to the negative and, um, and navigate my life that way. And um, I think that really helps with the perspective of just kind of I mean, are there things that I'm going to wish I've done? Sure. But I think at the end of the day, like, I'm not interested in waiting till I retire. I'm not interested in waiting till I'm almost um, closer to, to death than anything else, you know, uh, before I experience uh, life. Because honestly, like, none of us know yeah. when that, you know, it could be tomorrow. We don't know. And um, I want to, I want to experience life as it comes you know, and live it right now and know that I can look back. And I know like, even now, like there's so much that I've been able to do because I just listened to my instincts and my guts and chose, um, choice, chose joy instead of fear that I, I feel like, like tomorrow I would still feel like I've done so much. I've lived a good life, you know? And that's just, that's really what I want. Um, is to be able to to live a good life and also be able to cheer everybody on as they live theirs. Like I, it's so beautiful to me when there are communities that are cheering each other on earnestly, like yes. not to bring each other down because they feel bad about themselves, not seeking to, you know, find something in others that'll make them look better, just genuinely happy for other people. I think that's that's something that doesn't happen very often. So when I, when I find people like that, I tend to gravitate to them very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. And actually, <laughs> no, same. I feel the same way. I feel the same way. Um, and I also just want to say, like, I think it's, it's extremely brave and it shows just how much growth as a person that you've gone through where you can choose the positive side of things rather because it's so easy to latch on to the negative whether that's like a negative experience or um something negative that someone said or just the negative thoughts so I really think it it takes even more courage to actually look at the positive because yeah because it's so easy to just sit in negative everything. You got to believe it, right? Like yes. the, whole, the whole thing is doing the work. And I know right now it's very popular. People saying very often, you know, love yourself, love yourself. Um, but really, that's the truth of it. It is very hard to love someone outside of yourself when you don't even like yourself. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, it, it is it, it's very common to be judgmental towards somebody else when you're constantly judging yourself because we mirror out of ourselves you know and um to towards other people and and we draw in that same energy and so I've spent a lot of years a lot of years uh just focusing on loving myself again it's been nine years of me focusing <laughs> on loving Damn. myself 
you know, and, um, and just kind of going back to habits that I created within myself. I, I still remember the habits of speaking badly to myself and, and, and how that started. Like, it's just, you know, we, we have to choose to actively speak kindly to ourselves and, and then it'll start happening, right? Like slowly, slowly, but it happens. You start to believe yourself just as much as you believe yourself when you're talking negatively about yourself, yeah. you know, those habits. And the more you do it, um, the more you believe yourself, you're more prone you are to being happy, right? And then once you're happy, then it's easier to see the happiness in others and cheer others on. And once you are um, feeling good about yourself and once you trust yourself, then it's a lot easier to to see who you can trust in others, right? Because yeah. then you can be like the healthy people. Like it's it's easy to gauge the difference between someone that's healthy and good for you and someone that's not because you're actively working on something positive within yourself. And so there's a lot of power in that. And it's very easy to fall into the trap of um, of just having a day-to-day negative perspective on the world when when we have all those negative thoughts about ourselves constantly there. And I mean, I still struggle with it. I have all sorts of things that I'm working on still. I think it's a life journey. Oh, but, of course. Um, of course. You know, yeah, I um, I I think that it's so it's so true though, and I always thought it was kind of lame to be like, oh, love myself, love myself, you know, because after a while, <laughs> yeah, all right. But it's true, you know, it's like so true. it's so important to read. Like, what do you like about yourself? It starts as simple as that, you know. Like I, you know, it, it used to be that. I was the last person on my list for anything that came to a value, right? Well, when you're the last person on the list for everything, you become a very exhausted human being because now you're just taking out all your energy and gifting it away. Yep. And you're not trying to say, you know, it's okay for me to rest because I'm important too. And it's okay for me to do something nice for myself because I'm valuable too. And I deserve just as much joy as everybody else around me, you know, and you got to believe yourself. And that, takes a lot of work it's not as easy as it sounds no it's it's not I mean I I also spent a good portion of my life like catering to others um whether that was family or even in my last relationship my long-term relationship it's like I always felt like I was putting others before I before myself right Um, I learned that it's it's not selfish to put myself first because how can I help someone else if if I need help as well? Right. Um, yeah, it just I I found a lot of the times it left me very drained and um yeah, it was almost like I was lost like within the conversation or like it's like I wasn't even there. With, right. with certain situations or I, I never asked myself well how am I feeling in this situation or um yeah it's like I, I felt like I was um taken out of it out of the equation I guess yeah and yeah it took me a very long time to come back to my center and come back to who I was as a child um that's been a big theme for me of going back to like that um that younger me that was a super adventurous soul and just like wide-eyed and um just like a happy funky personality like I growing up I would wear like mixed match clothes like nothing ever matched like I was just yeah I was just myself and it took me so long to come back to that and to not be ashamed of being a little like quirky or different. But yeah, what you were saying about um, loving yourself and putting yourself first, like I, I think it's the most simplest thing that it's just, it's such a simple idea or it's, it's a simple thing to, to realize, but then, oh no, not to realize. It's a simple concept. 
but I feel like it goes deeper than just like oh I have to love myself you know right like you have to take that right. first step to actually yeah to actually well it starts with listening yeah. right yeah because yeah. like even with friends even with with everybody it starts with listening right and and that's how you establish trust with the people around you with the community well you got to establish a certain amount of trust on yourself because you know if, if you're like me I personally uh have spent years badgering myself about lots of things right and um and that's a whole different story as to how and why but but um uh, I had to start listening to myself and that included the badgering and the negative self-talk um, because I had to take the moment to acknowledge that I was doing it. You know, I feel like right now, especially with so much media, um, we are able to just disappear and ignore our feelings. And I think the hardest part of this journey for me has been listening to that negative self-talk, acknowledging that it exists and um, and choosing not to embrace it. Um, yeah. Because until I could acknowledge that I was even doing that, I was living in a state of denial all the time. And I was constantly trying to find other things to make myself feel better, you know? And yes. Yes. it's always feel empty inside of you if you're not filling it with, with the positive stuff, right? And so- um, so I just, I've had to learn a lot of things like allowing myself to feel the feelings, right? Um, mm -hmm. could I pick up a book or look through TikTok or do all the things, pick up a, a you know, sketch, anything to distract myself. Yeah, I could do that. Um, but it's going to take me longer to heal. It's going to take yes. me longer to really understand myself. And I just went deep dive into just the self dissection of just like literally just like what is causing this why what when you know and just letting myself see it and feel it and acknowledge it and not stopping the tears when they come yeah. um and it I just there's something so powerful and at the same time extremely draining about just sitting in that right it's not a good yeah. feeling, especially at first. Um, but I do remember my first time just kind of saying, I'm going to feel these feelings and I'm not going to hide behind anything else. And it was like, just my body was just like, like I could feel it like nervous shaking inside of me yeah. and just kind of like the thoughts that I didn't want to think about and the things I didn't want to process, just letting them pass so that I wouldn't just bottleneck and explode, right? And and just like that whole feeling, it felt like it was just painful is all I can describe it as. But then realizing that it's going away because it's as it's in here, it's also you're letting it flow out of you. Like it's just, right. it it is as fleeting as you allow it to be. Like it actually takes more strength and it's it takes longer to heal because you're like, holding on to it so tight yeah and it's just like finally let yourself feel it right it's just like mountains of sobbing right and so mm -hmm. or I could just feel it right now like I think um the best way I can describe it is um Moana like Tafiti yeah like yep. <laughs> I could not identify with a character more than that mountain like I just cried buckets when I saw that movie <laughs> because I just remember thinking oh my god they stole her heart and I was like, why isn't anybody talking about the fact that they stole her? Like, I knew her heart was missing, you know, that like little right. knot. And, um, and I just, it just made me cry because I thought like, I, I can identify with it so deeply, you know, being at a point where you feel like your heart is just not there. It's, it's been trampled on, it's, it's broken. And, and all the worst parts of you come out when your heart is not taken care of of when when was basically ash because of all the pain that one ex one can experience whatever it is everyone's journey is different but that pain is universal like we can all yeah. experience the kind of pain that makes our heart feel like ash right well when your heart is not healthy when it's black and ashen mm -hmm. you're gonna be lashing out 
you're going to be angry at everything. You know, the fire yeah. in the eyes, just like this, just, just all of that is sorrow. You yeah. know, like when, when I see people like lashing out with, especially right now when they're like, oh, the Karens, you know, like, I feel like, yeah, okay. There's some people that are just into causing trouble and you can see it, right. They, there's, there's a grin on their face when they're, when they're trying to cause trouble. And then there's some people that are just, they're oozing pain. Mm-hmm. And it's just like all I see is their pain just oozing out of them and they can't control it and they're not facing their emotions. So now it's just spilling out everywhere. They're yelling at their family. They're yelling at, at people they don't know. They're just, they don't know what to do with it. I've been that person. Like, it's just like when you don't know what to do with it, you know, like I've seen the worst, I like realizing <laughs> just how bad of a human I can actually be. Um. Well, it was important because it's humbling, <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, but it's, it's just, it also um, helped me to understand the importance of, of just like valuing myself and having boundaries and even within myself, having boundaries with myself, you know, yes. um, and it's just like knowing, even like taking the time to like know myself, what do I like? What do I not like? You know, I was so easily like, part of the problem was just like, I just wanted to please people. Right. And so if somebody would, that I cared about would suggest something, whether it was harmful to me or not, I'd be like, Oh, sure. That's great. I just want you to be happy. And right. I wouldn't think about the questions of what that would do to me. And, and we teach people how to, how to treat us. Right. We yes. teach people yes. where the boundaries are. And so I was constantly teaching people that I did not matter and surrounding myself with people that just love to take my energy yep. and didn't necessarily, you reciprocate know, it. reciprocate it. And mm-hmm. I would have these sparks of people in my life that I still reach out to and talk to that were just these green flagged people that were beautiful. And, yeah. and I would recognize them and be grateful to them. But I still, for some reason, was always reaching out more to the ones that were more toxic for me. Um, Like I had this thing in my head, like I could somehow, you know, be the positive aspect of of whether it be a friend or a family member or, or, you know, a romantic experience. It was always me going, choosing to give my light away, choosing to not put myself and giving that example to the person I was with as, yeah, it's okay for you to mistreat me. I don't even treat myself nice, you know? Like, I, yeah. I had my part in it. Like, I would love to be able to just blame people and be like, this person did this and that person did that. But the reality is I set an example as to how I was okay with being treated. And I had to really look into like, like, okay, Arlene, like, where's your worth? You know, let's, yeah. let's talk because you're not being kind to yourself. And it wasn't until I started being kind to myself that I really started um, able to to make better choices about a lot of things in life. And that includes the people that are around me. Yeah, no, uh, 100%. Like I can relate to everything that you said. Um, Yeah, even with, you know, holding the pain or trauma or whatever that is, it's, it's so heavy to hold that for years and years and years and I know for me it's like I wasn't even conscious that I that that's what it was and why it felt so heavy um but yeah I think one of the things that I had a realization about late or recently was um this concept of being grateful to feel all of that because it's almost like it, it was it's a it was a gift and it's a gift to to have gone through some of those things in a way but it's a gift now to realize like what it was and to sit in that in that pain because it allowed me to open up more and to also relate to others on i don't know on a more like deeper level um and to understand like a human existence, like it allowed me to understand, yeah, myself and, but it was the same on my journey. I, I think I spent a whole year just crying every single day and I couldn't pinpoint why. Um, 
I just knew that there was like deep seated pain that was sitting inside of me yeah. that I needed to I needed to like look at for the first time and to and to heal it and to know that like it's not s- scary to go there because I'm in control I'm the one that's right. in control of it it doesn't right. control me but I had to learn that over time that it's like oh well I can actually control this now right um, but yeah but yeah you're totally right it's like I feel like society nowadays it's um it's like people are are looking for ways to like escape or soothe themselves with without looking inside first and understanding like okay what are my triggers or like why do I feel anxious in this moment or um right why do I get so angry yeah it's like people not everyone but it's like a lot of people are just so shut off from it because they don't want to look at it Um, right oh it feels easier to be able to avoid it but it's really not I mean it's easy at back it but then it's like it's it's like you find yourself going why can't I sleep well (laughs) yeah it's trying to come out it's trying to be processed and and it's really important to take the time to do it you know and um no it's not it's not a good feeling to do it like I I I would love to be able to say it's an easy journey it's totally easy just go ahead and listen to your feelings (laughs) but it's so much deeper than that you know meditation really helps with that and being able to like just sit with that feeling just sit with it as long as it takes it could be that it takes five minutes or it could be that it takes you know three days where you're taking the time to just silence like I don't know how many times I just like I want everything off in my house you know like nothing I don't I don't want the radio I don't want tv I don't want anything because I I'm in my thoughts you know and my mind is busy and if it's busy it's because there's things that need to be processed and I used to think scary monster and it's really not it's me I'm I'm just spending time with me you know and and yeah like I'm scary uh, uh, like the Fiti is if if I'm (laughs) not myself you know but but uh the goal is to to be healthier and turn green you know like yeah yeah a hundred percent and yeah it's it's not an easy journey um you know a lot of a lot of times in the spiritual spaces or maybe not so much now but maybe a couple years ago but there was this idea of like healing and it being like all you know lightness and butterflies but it's really not like the healing journey when you're looking inside of yourself it's fucking hard like it's it can be a very stormy sea sometimes and it's it's not easy it's not easy but it's like um I I said this on a previous episode and I've also like wrote about this a lot it's like the only way that we can work through something is to actually be in the trenches of it and to actually feel it and and honor it but it's like we have to remind ourselves that there's always light and there's always an end point to it where it's like you're not stuck in it it's just it's a, a moment or a feeling and if you can just honor it it's like that's how you can work through it is by honoring it Um, yeah I love that you're using that word specifically honoring it like the the very first time you said it I thought that is exactly it like you have to honor your emotions you have to to take the time to honor like everything about who we are like is it's like when you think about how we function you know like this fleshy uh skin yeah. that we have you know it's like meat suit <laughs> that we wear every day <laughs> every day you know but but um but but we at like our souls in it like when you think of like like I don't know butterflies I, I talked to somebody else about this you know um I was reading about about scientists who were who were like um kind of studying the energy of, of of um caterpillars you know because they noticed that some caterpillars turn into butterflies faster than others and yeah. they were like what the deal some of them are like this tiny and then they're like chrysalis and then others are like big fat caterpillars and there's no like consistent timing and yeah. when they start 
take the time to measure the energy of them, they, they notice that it, it falls in line with, with nervous energy. Mm-hmm. And there, there's a fear in some of them, because when you think about it, how are they to know they're going to become a butterfly? Right. They're going in this cocoon, you know what I mean? Right. And um, I just thought if that's not just nature, you know, of course, like take the time to be in the darkness, you know, like so many of us avoid it, but ultimately like there, there's great be- beauty and growth there, right? Like our babies grow in darkness, you know, uh, yeah. butterflies go in darkness. Like it, there's something powerful about the dark um, and being able to sit in that silence, um, that it is honoring, it's honoring your emotions, allowing yourself to feel what you feel there in, and not giving it something, not assigning it a negative emotion, but just accepting it as an emotion, you know, uh, having yeah. grown evangelical, I think I spent a lot of time just kind of shaming myself for having negative emotions, which then just exact exasperated like exasperated the situation because then I'm just like now I'm guilty about feeling the emotion you know and it, it just goes into this whole not and then there's the anxiety and it's all this thing where it's just humanity you know yeah. like it, it's not don't feel the emotion it's just don't get lost in it just allow yourself to see it for what it is right and and like don't give it the power like you have the power to to just like feel it and let it process out of you and then choose to be. And a lot of times what holding that in is, is losing our power because then we're, we're giving literally all of our energy to that specific emotion and thought because we're holding onto it so tight that it takes more energy every single time yeah. to keep hunger. And it's like, then you hear the, the, why, I don't know why I'm tired. Well, we're tired because we're constantly trying to hold it you know like it's just the more I started letting go the more I started taking naps and I was like why am I always sleeping and it was just (laughs) the realization well you've not allowed yourself to actually rest there's a reason I had insomnia right it's because I wasn't up to rest I was laying down but I would not have like a full night's sleep and the more I allowed myself to process my emotions the more I was able to actually rest and my body was just kind of like, thank you. I'm recuperating. Like, right. you know, it's a lot of energy to process your thoughts, you know? Yeah. And, um, you know, and then I had to even give myself permission to rest because it was just, I yes. had this whole talk of, Oh, you know, what will people think if I'm resting? <laughs> oh no, it'll right. look like I'm lazy because I actually have to take care of my body, you know? Oh no, it'll look like I, like, well, like, I, I don't care about A, B, or C because I'm taking the time to rest. And the reality is, like, no, it just looks like you're resting <laughs> unless you are surrounding yourself with really unhealthy people that expect you to have no self care. Right. And do I really want to listen to those people? No, they have their own issues to take care of. They, I, you know, like, I decide who's power, who has power over me, right? I decided who right. I'm going to give and I'm not giving it away anymore I'm very careful who I let into my life right now like the minute yeah. I realize or I see any kind of sign of red flag or just this is not you know like good like there's any kind of discomfort or whatever like I'm, I'm very selective like I have my group I'm friendly to everybody right but my people like the people that know about like why I draw the things that I draw like the people you know right um, totally about because it's it's like you you have to be able to speak your truth to people that are kind and and are at the same level where you are emotionally and spiritually and will honor you and will also trust you with their own fragility right and it's a mutual exchange and if it's not a mutual exchange then that's not a real connection connection and how many times life have I chased after Mm -hmm. you know false connections because they seem like good people well no (laughs) you know 100 percent. okay to say you know what um I'm gonna choose just I'm gonna choose myself (laughs) and I'm gonna people that choose themselves and together we're gonna have this community small community of people that's just 
we all choose each other first and then you're you're able to be able to mirror that to each other and be strong for each other because you're already strong within yourself you know and, and there's something really cool about that and I haven't experienced that until I made myself self-dissect which was a very process and it still yeah. is because it's never like an end of it's not like oh I graduated like right right of course yeah and yeah I mean healing or I guess evolving as a human like it's yeah it's like it's never it's never done but if we can just keep leveling up in ourselves and keep showing up for ourselves and showing us ourselves kindness and yeah just creating more happiness and love in the world like I know that's so cheesy and like hippie for me to say that but um, no way <laughs> yeah like it's so much sadness like yeah I all about being little spots of light little specks of light of the people around us you know I want to yeah. cheer on people around me just because I'm not super close doesn't mean I'm not going to cheer you on if you did something awesome I'm going to let you know you know right. but 100%. but I'm also not close enough to let people drain my energy just because they don't want to find their own you know right yeah no a hundred percent and I totally resonate with everything because I was very similar to you as well where um I I was always the friend that people would go to for problems or issues and I was like the fixer right the, the fixer and it's like after a while that got really exhausting because it's like you know a friendship or any kind of relationship if that's um romantic or not or reciprocate uh, yeah it needs yeah it yeah. needs to be balanced absolutely like, okay, I give to you you give to me or I pour my water in your cup you pour your water in my cup like that yeah. kind of exchange um but I also I had this epiphany a couple years ago when I was really deep into my healing journey where I'm like this is such a simple idea but it's exactly what I think we're here on this world to understand and experience is the idea of love like I I really feel like yes humans are here to understand how to love one another and it, it yeah. doesn't I'm getting like head tingles right now <laughs> like, oh um, I love <laughs> and it, it doesn't have to be a romantic love but just even even loving someone just because they are they are like that's it just exactly like there's so much beauty in each individual person not everybody yeah. might see it within themselves but there is like all the beauty and all the complexities of our humanity and I yeah. that's why Valentine's Day is my absolute favorite <laughs> <laughs> like I'm crazy but I'm telling you like I just it's not about romantic love it's about mm. just knowing how to love right like yes. your friends your community the people around you what you give out I think the reason all of my paintings have some form of heart shape on it is because I, I have a really deep belief that what we do what we create is really connected to our soul and our heart right? It's just like, we're speaking our heart through our music, we're speaking our heart through our poetry, we're speaking, you know, and it and it takes a certain amount of bravery to speak truthfulness. You know, there's a lot of people that make music. There's a lot of people wow. that write, poetry, but not all of them will write the truth of themselves, right? And right now, yeah. it's just like, I just, I think it's so important that that we walk in our truth and kind of yeah. shine that that light of love and examples to the people around us. I just want, like, if I could help people to all love themselves, I would do it. And the only way I can think of is just to showing myself as an example of it. And I'm not everybody's cup of tea. I know not everybody's going to look at me and be like, oh my gosh, Arlene, you know, but I, <laughs> I, no. I had to come to terms. I think we all do of just yeah. like the impossibility of, of making everybody like you and making everybody yeah. understand you know, like being misunderstood has always been like a core fear of mine. I just had to just let it go and just be like, you know what? It's okay. Right. Like the people that are meant to be in my life that I'm meant to speak into and that are meant to speak into me, we're all going to gravitate to each other. Everybody else is going to gravitate to whoever else they're meant to be with. But like our ripples matter. Our actions cause ripples through everything, you know, and we just have to 
fluid enough to move with it. And I just, I, I love it. I love is, is like, love is not, is not just romantic. Love is just an over, like it, an overall feeling of just like what you give out, right? Yeah, when you love 100%. yourself and love literally everyone else around you. And, and that includes hearing them, what their boundaries are, what, what's important to them, you know, what they don't yeah. like, what they do like, you know, how can I give to my community? How can I love on my community that's struggling and or not struggling or, you know, like all of that. And, and it's why it pain, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And also um, to your point of, about being misunderstood, it's like, I had this thought as you were talking where it's like, well, maybe, maybe maybe in us it it looks as being misunderstood like a previous version of ourselves but yeah. in, but in reality it's like we're just not speaking the same language and like that's totally fine yeah you know, it's totally like right. yeah. but get there and understand that it's not always right. easy but you're, it's just like you know uh, we all have our our own ways of communicating appreciation of each other dislike yeah. not this know some people are not ready to be walking in the green and and be positive you know because they're going through struggles that I can't even fathom you know totally, and, totally. and I mean I I've been in the place where I haven't been ready and I've been angry all the time and moody all the time and and you know if that that's not who you're supposed to like pour yourself into then then that's just not and if they they don't like me then they have every right to not like me I don't like right. everybody so right like, right it's fine 100 and also um also too it's like I also had this growing up too where it's like I want it to be liked by everyone as well <laughs> but it's like there was so much anxiety and fear that sat in that where I'm just like oh everyone has to like me and and I need everyone to like but I think it was because people weren't seeing the real me so there was so much like anxiousness around that yeah and also I think it all goes circles back around to but what if nobody likes you yeah and it's just me then I'm just by myself well what's wrong with that well well if I'm by myself I don't really like me either because I don't want to hear my thoughts and I don't want to feel the feelings and I don't you know and it's just like it all goes back to like okay if there's nobody else around you if there's literally nobody else and it's just you can you be kind to yourself can you enjoy yourself can you like yourself yeah. you know I've spent so many years I I'm notorious for just traveling alone just going to restaurants alone going to the show alone I am yeah. constantly traveling alone and dating myself because yes. I I don't need somebody else I want somebody else and there's a difference. And for a long time, I thought I needed people around me. I needed the friends. I needed everybody to be happy because that meant that I was worth, you know, a worthy person. But right. I'm the one that has to actually know and believe that I'm a worthy person, you know, mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, I'm with me. <laughs> and, yeah. And totally. I think we're a bit scared of being alone and being with ourselves sometimes, you know? totally and I think I think it goes back to finding ways to like soothe ourselves where if we constantly need to be around other people it's like it's a distraction it's a distraction um, yeah and I yeah I, I think I think the greatest thing that we could all learn is is how to sit with ourselves because you're right it's like it starts it starts with us and loving ourselves first putting ourselves first like it starts with you so it's yeah like, yeah it's like if you're not right with yourself it's like how are you going to be right with other people around you or in a yeah. partnership or um with friends or like in a I don't know in like a work environment it's yeah. like you got to be right with it I think there's like isn't there a Fuji song like you got to be right with <laughs> I don't know I forgot the lyrics but I know it's <laughs> I know it's there <laughs> it's something like um oh I'm gonna get this so wrong it's something like uh how oh my god I'm gonna um, no I can't it's something like 
I don't know it. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll look it up, but it's it's basically the, the same thing. <laughs> I that song, and I'm like, I know I listen to a lot of music. You would think that I would like, you know, like a dictionary right. of just like, bam. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> but basically it, the lyric is something like uh being right within like how can I be right for you if I'm not right within yeah yeah maybe I'll, I'll, link, I'll link the song <laughs> so, so. No, like, there's something really cool about, be, about being able to become your own favorite person you know uh, and, totally uh, and hard but it's like it can be kind of addictive once you get used to like <laughs> I know like, energy do I want in my space and um is this person really a healthy person for me to wear it's so much easier to just be like now when you actually enjoy yourself (laughs) you know when you enjoy being with yourself to just be like I'm just gonna be very selective and choose who I let into my world um because a lot of our lives just being desperate not to be alone yeah yeah and I think the crazy thing is it's like it's like we come into this world and we leave alone so it's like yeah it's like we have to be okay yeah with being alone sometimes or yeah or just the idea of aloneness um yeah, because I I think I think people are just afraid. Like they're afraid to see what's what's there when you really like sit with yourself. But in fact, like there there shouldn't be fear around it because because it's just you. It's you. So that's right. That's right. <laughs> and when you start to break it down, you realize all those negative thoughts come from specific voices that you know are not. We your- may have heard. Uh, through our lives either yeah. consistent from a person or con- or just just like it, you know like like I just I remember even as a kid it's just like I could have a room full of kids that were just like oh you're awesome and there'd be that one kid that didn't like me and I'd be like I'm determined <laughs> you're gonna make this kid like right. me that's like why why you know and so then it's just like their voice somehow becomes the say all and end all and and there's no reason for that you know, and it's so when I stop to just think, you know, all these negative thoughts, where did this negative thought about myself start? Mm-hmm. It generally started with somebody else telling me something that led to that thought that I just continued to say to myself for years. Right. And, and so it's really like, you have to just let go of everybody else's opinions. But what do you think of you? You know? Right. Yeah. Think and I'm, what's true for you? For like, you. I enjoy this, you know, and I'm living what I enjoy. You know, I have a poster that I keep up in the house that says, you know, be your own kind of beautiful. And I'm always amused to see what people interpret from that. A lot of a lot of times people will say, you know, like, oh, you know, that has to mean that you have to be okay with the fact that you're ugly. And I'm like, well, who told you you're ugly? Right. You know, like by right. standards, because yeah. there's a somebody that thinks you're beautiful physically but right. beauty, beauty is is so much more than you know our fleshy suits <laughs> right it's so and much more you know and it's just like when when we as people start to live our favorite things we start doing the things that we like we start living our best life what we what we like what we value if, if take our own opinion first and just kind of then we start to shine and that yeah. beauty draws so many people, you know, like, I don't know how many people, how many times in my life I've seen a gorgeous human being and I'm like that you are beautiful, but what else? <laughs> like, right. I want to, I want to know what's in there. And, and, right. you know, like sometimes it, it doesn't match. Sometimes all yeah. they have, they're clinging on to their physical beauty and, um, I just there's just so much more to life like you know life again is so so short like really beauty like it can go like that it can go so yeah. quick but also beauty beauty is it's uh yeah, it's, <laughs> yeah exa- exactly it's like society is what told us is beautiful but in fact there's something beautiful about every single person 
um and it's not always physical but yeah it's like who who set the who set the rules for like what beauty is and and why do we still like listen to that because yeah. society or some person in a suit told us that that these are the standards I, like no. no I think one of my favorite people that I think back at when it comes to to beauty standards is Barbara Streisand there was an interview where she where they where she was mentioning that when she was starting to act um she would actually have directors tell her that she was ugly and her response was like you're clearly insane I'm beautiful <laughs> can you imagine if she would have believed them yeah Barbara Streisand is a goddess <laughs> like to if she would have believed them we wouldn't have half the films or music that she's done like right. she's a power being and she chose to know her own truth and she right. was not about a guy who had a whole different opinion of what beauty standards were right decide she couldn't do film or she couldn't do music because her nose or because her hair or because her skin right. like I love that I love that so much because it's truth you know yeah but going back to Barbara Streisand it's like I I think it takes people like her to go against the grain of like what be, like beauty standards are um yeah I mean she's gorgeous but yeah. not everybody he and that's fine <laughs> right right yeah and uh yeah I, I just I've always had an issue with um with like what society says that especially with women like what we should look like how we should yeah. dress um yeah. body types all, yeah. all of it um so I don't know I'm I'm actually really happy that the last couple of years that people have kind of been like no um like that doesn't make any sense to try to fit everyone in these small little boxes absolutely because I know I'm I, oh sorry go ahead. no I was just saying that's just not the reality of life yeah it's it's it, not it's not and I know when I was growing up it's uh the super skinny was popular like to be super skinny with even like super skinny jeans and this and that and yeah. um I remember that my body type wasn't ideal because I was I was an athlete like I grew up playing sports um so my body type having you know like stronger legs or like a bigger butt like it wasn't it wasn't yeah. in style <laughs> like yeah. so that's why like I'm just really happy that slowly we're kind of going away from that but um yeah I mean I always feel like styles and trends will seesaw but um yeah it's like we shouldn't be holding people to such insane standards it's like that or any standards just yeah. be you right. and I love very much the message is coming across right now it's just it's okay to be you yeah you know we don't, we don't have to compare ourselves to anybody else. You know, I can be excited about your beauty as yeah. much as I can be excited about mine, you yeah. know? And um, I mean, my whole life I've struggled with it, <laughs> you know, because um, <laughs> of just multiple different reasons. Um, but I think just holding such high regards as to what another human being thinks about what I look like is so unnecessary um you know because other human beings are allowed to not like my personality and they're not they're also allowed to not like the way I look it doesn't really matter you know and usually like I'm very much um in the mindset like I might not be particularly physically attracted to somebody but then their personality shines out and to me they're the most gorgeous human being in the world whereas that same human being has always been super attracted to somebody else you know and um I just think really it's so important to just really be healthy inside um yeah because you know there's just there's just not a lot I just can't relate to being so obsessed with the outside 
mm-hmm. that 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 I've become kind of there's no gold in my life there's no joy in my life there's no adventure in my life there's no anything else because everything has to be beauty I I just I can't relate to that and I I don't want to you know it just yeah. to you meet someone that's just really sad and unsure of themselves and I've been unsure and sad and I never want to be that again so yeah yeah same and saying that <laughs> can you <forget> that? <laughs> <laughs> like well, I'm I I <laughs> no I'm 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 on the same page with that I yeah I I don't want to be anyone else except for who I am um yeah and I I don't want to look like anyone else like I don't yeah I just I just want to be me like what we were saying before like when I look see is everything on paint (laughs) like you (laughs) like I hope you don't ever like worry about somebody else that might not see that beauty in you you know because your face is the kind of face that is in paintings in freaking Italy and it's fine (laughs) you know and some people might look at those paintings and go I don't get it why well who cares right, <laughs> right. I wish um yeah I'll have to I'll have to go back and see what kind of paintings were those but no I, yes, appreciate, got- I appreciate that <laughs> <I'll send them. laughs> yeah can someone paint me that'd be great um <laughs> no um but- not purple. I don't usually paint people the real color but you can you, you can paint me however you want. <laughs> I would love to be purple. <laughs> um. Oh no! I'm, I'm, I'm I lost my Sorry. no no. <laughs> <you're totally fine. laughs> um. No, but like. Yeah, I I. Okay, I would like to say that other people's opinions about I guess about beauty or I would like to say that I it doesn't affect me but then I would be lying because um right yeah it's like of course of course uh that's something that I'm still working on is like well me too it's way easier said than done right (laughs) but like in a myself you know it's okay (laughs) right exactly it's Um, myself Sometimes I'm the one that's being the critic you know yeah yeah exactly exactly and yeah I'm I'm trying to reprogram those um those voices in my head where it tells me that I'm not enough or that I I'm not beautiful enough or like my body isn't enough um but it it's very hard to to turn that off but I feel like as I've gotten older, especially being in my 30s, like, I don't know, there's something about turning, like, I'm 33 now, but when I turned 30, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm like, this is me, like, I know who I am, and of course, like, still figuring that out, but I feel like a lot of my 20s, I felt like I was trying to be someone that I wasn't, or or trying to be another person that someone else wanted me to look like or dress like or be like. Um, yeah, and finally I just like put my foot down. I'm like, no, no, I'm yeah, I can only be myself. And right. if if you're not rocking with that, like that's totally fine. Um I don't expect anyone if if they don't understand me. I don't expect them to to get it but if you get right. it, you get it and like it's totally yeah cool. and I mean think about it like who what kind of person would be the person to be like you know I don't really I don't really jive with your look so I don't think you're a cool person for me to hang out it's like that's a that's a hollow person anyway like yeah <laughs> like really if that's the standard that I have to look a certain way first before you get to know me as a human yeah no yeah I mean I I felt like not to bash my past relationship but I felt like there was a lot of that kind of like telling me how I should look or how I should be um like my clothing how I wore my hair um and never never again 
like Mm -hmm. never again um that's why after I I went through my breakup I literally chopped off all my hair I shaved the side of my head (laughs) I dyed it a crazy color um because I was like no no one's gonna put me in this box anymore like I I was never that person to be uh, yeah just yeah. to be told that I should be or look a certain way I always yeah. bubbled against that even when I was younger um, yeah. and it took me a, a long time to like embrace that that inner child but it's like that's the best thing that I I can do um because that's really who I am is that like kooky young girl who loved color and like wearing crazy outfits and yeah it's like that's who I am yeah I could see that being you yeah I um yeah I I hated like new clothes like I always loved hand-me-downs and at still in a (laughs) like thrift store like queen (laughs) yeah yeah Oh, even if I have a lot of money, it's just gonna be a lot of money spelled and vintage clothes. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> spent clothes is honestly like way cooler. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and just like I don't know, just embracing that more, and um, yeah, and just in like showing up for my inner child. It's like that's yes, that took a long time to bring that back in, but um. It's like, I really feel like our inner childs should be the ones to steer the boat of of where we go, you know, as adults. Because, yeah. I don't know, it's like, that's, I, I think like our inner child or who we were as kids, it's like, that's really where our soul is. Yeah. And because at, at that time, it's, no one was telling us how to be or how to act. We just yeah. were being who we were. Yeah. We had the freedom of it because, you know, there was that whole mindset, or at least when I was growing up, of just like, oh, they're just, they're kids, you know? And and so yeah. we had the freedom to kind of do the things that we liked because we liked them, you yeah. know? And the older I got, I don't know, for me anyway, the older I got, the more it was like, I have to fit into this certain box, you know? But I think that's like everybody. Yeah. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. And I I think, I think the best thing that people can do is just to embrace all sides of themselves and yeah. And just to like see the beauty within because um, yeah, I don't know. I I think every person is, is beautiful. I really do. Yeah. Yeah. Like we all have something that's beautiful about us. Um, and what you were saying before about uh, like even romantically, it's like, I'm the same way. Like I, it's not all about looks for me. Like it, I have to connect with you on like a deep level. Yes. yes. And I, I will, I will wait 12 years if I need to. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> but same. I've been with the partners that are just like, well, your smile is big or your hair is too long or your hair is too short or you look weird in that outfit. It's kind of embarrassing that you think that's cute. You know, like, I, no, no. Yeah. You know, it's either balance and, and respect or nothing. And I'm good yeah. with that. I'm doing the work and I'm happy with me. I like going on my own dates. <laughs> yeah, same, same. <laughs> like, I would say the past four or five years, um, yeah, it's like I I took myself on a lot of just solo dates and it, I don't know, it's, um, it was really eye-opening as well to like be with myself and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because I don't know how many times growing up or, you know, even in my adulthood, like I'd be like, I wanted to go somewhere or see something and nobody else wanted to come with me. And I'd be like, oh, well, I guess I'm not going to go. Like, why? Yeah. <laughs> yes you know, exactly. I'm going by myself that's fine you know and I'm happy about it it's great you know I don't have to explain anything about or you know yeah. worry about, about anything I can just be 
you know? And I think those are the valuable relationships to me. My friendships, my best friendships are the ones where there's comfortable silence and there's, yeah. there's just, you're, you're showing up as you are and they're showing up as they are. You know, my best friend that I met when she was, she, we were both 16 years old and, um, my gosh, like we have lived a lot of chapters in our lives, but every time that we're around each other, it's just, we are just exactly who we are, you know, and there's no judgment there. And, and I've been lucky to be able to have, like, I can probably count in my hands how many people are, are like that, that I keep close, you know, and, um, mm -hmm. And I just think that's so beautiful, right? And if if we could all have that luck to at least have one person or we could just be grounded in ourselves and in silence, like I could live with the love of a really good friend and be completely satisfied with that And wow. versus like toxic kind of relationships we can all experience where it's just constant judgment and, and uh unnecessary negative treatment you know yeah yeah a hundred a hundred percent I um I totally I feel like I feel like I'm going to church today like everything that you're saying is like resonating so much <laughs> um what's what's something right now in your life that's making you like really excited like what's something that's sparking joy at the moment something that's sparking joy actually is just my my me allowing myself to to create space for the things that I love you know um uh I I've had a lot of different chapters in my life and most of them have been um focused on other people and um knowing that I have my my two teenagers who are just about adults they're at the cusp of being adults themselves right now and and um, and just having this time to just travel and paint and meet people and just, um, I don't know, there's a lot of joy in that. There's a lot of joy in being able to be around music. I think music can be so uh, fulfilling. There's so many different kinds of music that that's out there you know I don't have a favorite. If you look at my Spotify, it's crazy. It's, like, it's all over the <laughs> screaming rock to like you know to like uh Nora Jones you know it's mm -hmm. just it's a mixture of everything and Lizzo and Harry Styles and you know like all of it is in there you know and uh country and I just um I follow the energy and I follow the words you know there's a lot of wisdom in it you know even there's a place for all of it you know there's a place yeah. for every single aspect of this music spectrum you know um even even if it's screaming rock you know like I, I was I was talking to a friend and um I mentioned that there was there was a band that was screaming like like it just like at first you're just like they're just screaming but it still sounded kind of beautiful right mm, um yeah but they were like instantly like there was this just like catharsis about it like it was just like there's cultures that actually hire mourners to mm -hmm. to wail for them to just just wail because because something about having others wail as deeply as you feel when sometimes we ourselves don't know how to wail we don't know how to fully express that but to have an entire group of people whether you know them or not that are just on their knees screaming the agony that you can't mm -hmm. express yourself um, not fully is really healing and and that's what that feels like to me like sometimes you just gotta listen to someone scream out what you do yourself don't know how to scream out you know what yes. you can't point you know and it's like there's it's so healing and it's like like you could feel it like prickling almost you know because it's just kind of like yes that's what I feel and they're screaming it and maybe it's because you're living in a certain place that you're thinking maybe I shouldn't be screaming out loud like a crazy lunatic or maybe it's because whatever the reason might be that person can scream that sorrow in a way that you're not able to whether it's about love whether it's about heartbreak whether it's about you know losing a family member like there's yeah. beauty in you know and I really I don't think there's any specific genre that's better than the other um and I just love painting to all of it, every single one of it. Like, I love it. 
yeah no it, you're so right though it's like um it's like there is space for all of it because all of it um it's like puzzle pieces it's like everything has its purpose um yeah but yeah my spotify is also the same it's like all over the place um because it depends on my moods like I'm I'm really into listening to music that fits my moods um yeah so yeah it's it's also all over the place yeah but yeah I think that's so beautiful though to um to connect to music um because yeah it's like sometimes you you can't express certain emotions but a song can or yeah um even with painting it's like looking at certain paintings um it can yeah. bring out and express something that you don't know how to express to someone else yeah sometimes I'll look at a painting and I'll be like yes that's what I felt and I didn't know how to say you know oh. and I just just going to museums because it's just like all the thoughts like sometimes you can't express it other than in pictures and in colors you know and it's just yeah. yes that's exactly how I feel I just love that you know but um yeah I I love that that you're taking the leap into living your what your true purpose is um which is painting and yeah and it's it's just so wonderful to see um yeah like living your truth I, I feel like yeah. this is your next chapter I love it and and having so many people reach out to me like I get a lot of dms about um the impact that some of the paintings that they've been seeing on my website have has done to them and you know and wanting to have it close to them they want it on pillows they want it they want it on like they want it close to them and they and talking to me about what it means to them and sometimes it's completely aligned with why I painted it because I if I'm not mm -hmm. painting to music I'm a lot of expressionism and it's just like me processing my emotions and sometimes yeah. like completely not even within the realm of what I was thinking which I think is my favorite thing about art you know it's just like it can speak to people in so many different ways and yeah. so you know, I I do write down like um why the why of my expression is paintings but I I don't always do the why for for the paintings that I've done uh for music because um I, I want I want people to have the space to to have their own why you know like their right. own interpretation um uh but yes yeah, it's, it's phenomenal to me the way art works not just physical visual art but like you know music and poetry and and um regular storytelling is powerful you know yeah. um yeah because it, it's expressing it's express it's it literally comes from the soul so it's like expressing yeah it's expressing something that sometimes can't be put into words or yeah yes. it's just on like a different plane yeah it's soul level communication and I and to me that's what really makes anything powerful right like you see like there's books that that some people will be like it was an okay book but I feel like like we all tend to be drawn to the ones that are just real soul level, like truthfulness, yeah. just like it's, there's a magic in that because there's a lot of things that we're all afraid to speak out, to write out, to draw out, to paint. Uh, we're all afraid to expose ourselves. Right. And then here is someone who is gifted and they're, they're painting it for you. They're writing it for you. They're singing it for you. And it's just like, oh, I'm not alone in this thought. Oh, I'm not like complete, like other people do feel this and it's okay. Um, yeah. it, it's very healing, I think. Um, totally. To have art around yeah. us. Totally. Uh, so what can we expect from you next? Um, well, you can expect to see me at random places. <laughs> <laughs> um, I go to I, I drive to a lot and I and I don't mean just locally I drive to a lot of places I'm not I'm not um one to to ignore a good show so I I I will either drive 24 hours to Canada or I will drive 12 hours to wherever it needs to be but um if you see me feel free to say hi I do love that a lot of people wait until I'm painting I'll have people just kind of standing behind me watching and I and usually I have a friend with me that answers whatever questions but um 
I'm just, I love meeting people. So you can see me walking around. Uh, once summer gets a little bit warmer, I'm likely to be walking around downtown um, Broadway on, at Nashville and painting to some of those um, honky tonks that are open for the public. Um, <laughs> I but I, I think it's going to start getting soon that I'm going to have to start writing a schedule because I, I do have people that ask where I'm going to be next. Um, but for now, I, I, I do tend to be a little bit private about it. Yeah. But yeah. Like, exclusive. I, I, yeah, <laughs> um, but I'll be, I'll be posting a lot and, you know, I do yeah, accept, I, I have a couple commissions that I that have to work on right now, but. Yeah. And how can listeners support your work as well? Um, well, they can, they can go to my website and purchase uh, materials from there um, or they can invite me to their places I do do I do visit a lot of like home studios um, right now I don't have a studio where I welcome musicians when I lived in Nashville I, I used to welcome a lot of musicians into my home um, but I do travel and so if there's anybody that's interested in seeing their music produced into art or they know someone that they would like that to happen with um, just send me a message and uh, we'll coordinate. Yes. And I'm going to link um, your socials and your website Thank you. in this episode. And one last final thought that you have for our listeners that you want to leave with. One last final thought. Oh gosh, live the life you have. You have one and it is not a guarantee. So live it the best that you can and try not to be too hard on yourself because it was never meant to be a perfect life. It just has to be a life that you are respectful of, if that's possible. I love that. I love that. Well, thank you so much <laughs> for being on this episode. I'm thank so <laughs> yeah, I'm so happy to know you and to just see you on this journey and yeah to just like co-create with you as well and just I don't know I'm so happy that that we met and that we're friends like you mean you mean a lot to me so. I love you too <laughs> to never miss an episode follow dream speak on spotify and apple music and wherever you get your podcasts from you could also follow dream speak on instagram at underscore dreamspeak underscore and i am at underscore door grace underscore thank you so much for tuning in to the dreamspeak podcast and we'll see you on the next one